If you're looking for one of the best and most capable drones in the market, then this might be the drone for you. With an incredible camera, new features such as cruise control and night mode, and now at a lower price point, let's take a look at 50 things you need to know before buying the DJI Mavic 3 Classic, all less coming up and more. Hey everyone, Matthew here, and this is the exciting new DJI Mavic 3 Classic. Today we are going to take a look at the specs, new features, comparisons, and my experiences using this epic drone over the past few weeks. Now I'm going to try to approach this video from two different perspectives. Firstly, if you already own a drone such as a Mavic 2 Pro, or even the original Mavic 3, I'm going to talk about the big differences between them drones. Secondly, if you're a beginner or you're looking to buy your first drone and you want to jump in at the flagship end of the DJI lineup, then I'm going to talk about some of the features that come in this drone that you might already be aware of if you've been flying drones for a while, but I want to cover both bases so that you come away armed with the knowledge you need to know before buying this drone. Later in the video, I will also be talking about how you can protect your drone with DJI Care Refresh which protects against any potential damage or flyaways. And I have two free codes for one year of Care Refresh to give away. To enter, all you have to do is comment. So why not leave a comment right now and I'll go into the details of the competition and more information on DJI Care Refresh later in the video. If you want to rewind or jump to see a specific feature or watch any part of this video again, you can do that using the categorized timestamps down below. So if you're considering this drone and want to know more before buying, let's jump right in. Let's start by quickly taking a look at the design. And if you own or have seen a DJI Mavic 3 before, you will notice it's very similar. The Mavic 3 Classic shares exactly the same sleek, stealthy, modern and high performance drone body as the Mavic 3. With the only difference between the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic being that the telecamera is not included in the Classic version. Instead, you get a single camera, which is the exceptional Micro Four Thirds CMOS camera from the Mavic 3 that is capable of capturing beautiful, I mean truly stunning and detailed images. The rest is the same as the Mavic 3, including the eight obstacle avoidance sensors dotted around the drone, giving it that awesome omnidirectional obstacle avoidance and the large low noise propellers, which help contribute to this drone's exceptional performance while also keeping the noise levels reasonable. These propellers push and twist into place instead of using screws. And this makes them so much quicker to swap out or remove. The battery slides into the back of the drone and above that is a small flap where the micro SD card and type C slot are located. The Mavic 3 Classic weighs 895 grams, which is slightly lighter than the Mavic 2 Pro, which weighs 907 grams. And the Mavic 3 is also 895 grams, as that's to be expected as they share the same body. If you're upgrading from something like one of the mini drones, you will definitely notice the weight difference of this drone. But if you're changing from a Mavic 2 Pro, the weight will feel very familiar. Now, if you've been watching closely, you will have already seen one of the biggest and most exciting things about this drone. On the arm of the drone, you will see that the Mavic 3 Classic comes with a C1 classification. In the UK, drones such as the Air 2S and Mavic 2 Pro, due to their weight and lack of current classification, have to be flown in the A3, far away from people category. Or you can fly them in the A2 category if you take the A2 CFC course and exam, but because the Mavic 3 Classic has a C1 classification, this means you can fly it in the A1 category. And this really opens this drone up to be usable pretty much everywhere, and you don't need specific training to fly it in that category. Looking at the gimbal guard, and it has been redesigned for the Mavic 3 Classic compared to the Mavic 3. And this now makes it easier to put on, 
and holds the gimbal much more securely when fitted. When it comes to size, on screen now is the folded and unfolded size of the Mavic 3 Classic. The Mavic 3 Classic and Mavic 3 are both the same size due to sharing the same body and are only slightly larger than the Mavic 2 Pro, folded and unfolded despite having better flight time and wind resistance. The micro SD card slot is super easy to access and sits under a flap at the back of the drone, just above the battery. Under this flap, you can also see a Type-C connection, which can be used for charging the battery, doing firmware updates, or to access the files on the internal storage of the drone. Speaking of which, the Mavic 3 Classic comes with eight gigabytes of internal storage. That's not massive, but enough for around 10 minutes of 4K video. Now this is not going to cover you for a full day's recording, but it's definitely enough to allow you to get a few clips or photos at a location if you've forgotten your micro SD card and salvage the day. When the drone is turned on and stationary, such as when doing firmware updates, you will hear a fan come on. This helps keep the drone cool when not in the air and will prevent you getting a overheating warning that you may get when doing updates on other drones. Getting into location super quick to capture them spontaneous moments, fly fast to keep up with vehicles or move around quickly and efficiently is important. And this drone can do just that with speeds of up to 19 meters per second or 42 mile per hour in sport mode. In normal mode, you can fly up to 15 meters per second or 33 mile per hour. And lastly, we have cine mode, which is great for getting them slower cinematic clips. And in this mode, the drone will fly at five meters per second or 11 mile per hour. Wind resistance is also super important to make sure that the drone can fly in windy days and remain stable in position to get smooth clips and photos. The Mavic 3 Classic comes with a level 5 wind resistance and can handle wind speeds of up to 12 meters per second. This makes it more capable on windy days compared to the Mavic 2 Pro which has a wind resistance of 10.5 meters per second. When it comes to noise, the Mavic 3 Classic has low noise propellers which helps keep the noise down but as expected it's not as discreet as smaller drones such as the Mini 3 Pro. However, when compared to something like the DJI Avita, it is significantly quieter. Here is how the drone sounds hovering. And here is how the drone sounds when flying it around. Let's now talk about the camera, and this is where the Mavic 3 Classic absolutely shines. Before we look at the specs and some of the exciting new features, let's take a look at some of the example footage I managed to capture with this drone in some of the epic locations Ireland has to offer. from a drone that has a camera that rivals some digital cameras, the videos and photos you can capture with the DJI Mavic 3 Classic are absolutely beautiful and I was super super impressed with the images I was able to get. Talking about the camera, let's start with the sensor. Behind the new and improved gimbal guard sits a Micro Four Thirds CMOS Hasselblad camera and this has three axis stabilization, tilt, roll and pan. Now this is the same sensor that comes in the Mavic 3 and is a good upgrade over the one inch CMOS sensor available on drones like the Air 2S and Mavic 2 Pro. The larger sensor size helps provide better image quality and much better low light performance, including a new night mode, which we will look at later in the video. Something important to point out, and one of the only differences between the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic is that the Mavic 3 Classic does not come with a tele camera. You do, however, have a digital zoom available, which can be either used with the controller scroll wheel or by tapping this icon here and will allow a two times and three times digital zoom. For resolution, you can shoot 5.1K up to 50 FPS 
or 4K up to 60 FPS using the entire width of the sensor and using super sampling technology which gives sharp and impressive video. If you want to slow things down, you can record at 4K 120 FPS using the slow motion mode, which will allow you to slow the video down by around four to five times, or even more by recording in 1080p, which allows 200 FPS, and this will allow you to slow the video down by around eight times. One thing to note is there is around a 50% crop when using slow motion mode, and you will notice this crop in when you change to that slow motion mode. The Mavic 3 Classic also has an adjustable aperture, which ranges from f2.8 to f11, making the camera more flexible in different lighting conditions. The ability to change the aperture might be new to you if you currently fly a drone with a fixed aperture, such as the Mini 3 Pro or Mini 2, but this can allow you finer control to get your exposure just right. The field of view is 84 degrees, and the lens has a 24 mm equivalent focal length. With autofocus, the camera can focus on objects anywhere from one meter from the camera. As with most, if not all, DJI drones, you get two camera modes. Auto, where the Mavic 3 Classic will automatically set shutter speed, aperture, and ISO along with white balance to try and achieve the right exposure. And you can tell the drone to expose lighter or darker by changing the exposure compensation here or manual mode, where you control the shutter speed, aperture, ISO and white balance yourself, so that you have full control over how the image looks, and you can control these values individually. With the Mavic 3 Classic, you have three color profiles you can choose from. Normal, which uses something called the Hasselblad Natural Color Solution, and this gives you natural looking and vivid colors. This mode is perfect if you want to have video that is ready to go straight from the drone with minimal or no color grading cutting down on post-processing time. You can also use D-Log, which is a very flat color profile, but records in 10 bit to capture 1 billion colors, meaning footage can be more true to life. Just remember that a lot more effort and knowledge has to go into grading the footage for it to look that way and will require more time in editing. The last color profile, HLG, tries to split this difference. This color profile still requires color grading, but just not as much as D-Log. When recording in D-Log, everything will look very desaturated and flat, so it can be hard to expose correctly and get an idea of what the final video will look like. With the Mavic 3 Classic, in settings you can turn on an option called Color Display Assist for D-Log. This will add a quick color grade and saturation to the live video preview on the controller to help you see how the footage could look after grading and this helps a lot when recording in D-Log. Remember, this is only applied to the preview on the controller and does not affect the clips which are saved to the drone's micro SD card. Now, if you do a lot of drone flying at night, the Mavic 3 Classic comes with a new feature called Night Mode, which has better noise suppression and allows an ISO of up to 12,800, double of what is available in normal video mode, which has a max of 6,400 ISO. It also raises the minimum ISO to 800. You will also notice that when you use this mode, it crops the image in slightly. Currently, this only supports 4K 30 FPS, but this mode could be super useful if you record a lot at nighttime. The gimbal, which can be controlled using the scroll wheel on the back of the controller, can rotate unobstructed upwards to 35 degrees and downwards to minus 90 degrees. At no point does the drone's propellers come into view, making any degree of gimbal angle useful for videos and photos. When it comes to photos, the Mavic 3 Classic can capture absolutely beautiful 20 megapixel equivalent images, which have a resolution of 5,280 by 3,956. These can be captured in JPEG, JPEG and RAW, or RAW only. Moving on to the batteries, which can be inserted in the back of the drone and click into place. To remove the battery, you press the buttons on each side and this allows you to slide it back out. Flight time is a massive positive of this drone, with each battery giving a state of flight time of 46 minutes. This is 15 minutes more than the Mavic 2 Pro and Air 2S pair battery. And if you get the Fly More kit, which comes with two batteries, to have three batteries in total, this will give you a massive 45 minutes more flight time when using the Mavic 3 Classic compared to using three batteries with the other two drones mentioned when on location. 
Now, when one of them batteries is fully drained, charging it back to 100% takes around an hour and a half. And if you get the Flymore kit, it should take around four hours and 50 minutes to charge them all. The Flymore kit also comes with a 65 watt car charger, which can also charge one battery in around an hour and a half. Something interesting to note, if you already have a Mavic 3, is that the Mavic 3 Classic is compatible with the Mavic 3 batteries. This means that if you use these drones professionally and are considering buying the Mavic 3 Classic as a backup drone, you can interchange the batteries between the two. The transmission between the controller and the drone uses OkiSync 3 Plus to achieve a range of up to 15 kilometers FCC. If you're in a location with strong interference, such as an urban area, you will more likely get 1.5 to 3 kilometers. Somewhere with medium interference, approximately 3 to 9 kilometers, and then a location with low interference, such as an open landscape, you will get approximately 9 kilometers up to the max 15 kilometers range. It's really important to note that these are FCC figures, so if you're in an area which uses CE transmission, such as Europe, the signal range will be reduced from these figures. I personally never fly the drone anywhere near that far away, but I've been flying this drone in lots of different locations over the past few weeks. And some of them locations have had lots of obstacles and been high interference, such as a forest where you would normally expect the signal and transmission to get a little spotty. But this drone has not lost connection once and I've been very impressed with the transmission of this drone. When it comes to previewing what you're recording on the controller, it streams 1080p at 30 FPS and 1080p at 60 fps video to the controller which means the camera view is displayed at specifications close to what the camera actually records. Now you may remember that one of the initial niggles with the original Mavic 3 when it launched was that it took a very long time to acquire satellites to do things like update the home point, sometimes even minutes. This was later fixed with a firmware update but it may still be a concern if you're considering the Mavic 3 Classic. Well, I'm happy to report that in my time flying this drone, this hasn't been a problem once. And on average, it's taken around 10 to 20 seconds to acquire satellites, which is more than quick enough. Alongside the usual flight modes, we also have a new flight mode called Cruise Control. Cruise Control is a new feature that allows you to fly in any direction without having to continually press the control sticks. This can be really useful for getting a nice consistent motion with your drone and help reduce shakes during manual control for smoother camera movement. To use this feature, we first need to set the function button to Cruise Control, which we can do by going to Settings, Control, and then scroll down to Button Customization and set either the C1 or C2 button to Cruise Control. Then when in flight, once you have the drone going in the direction and speed you want to maintain, just press the function button assigned and the drone will continue. With the Mavic 3 Classic, we have the Active Track 5.0 system, which was introduced with the Mavic 3. Let's quickly look at the modes available and how this works. To use these, you first draw a box around your subject and then the drone can automatically detect if this is a person, vehicle, bike or other moving objects using subject recognition. In spotlight mode, the drone will stay in place and rotate or gimbal the camera to keep your subject in the center. Think of this as an automatic cameraman using a tripod to record your subject from the air. Another awesome thing you can do in this mode is fly the drone using the controller and it will keep the subject centered at all times. This allows you to do moves such as an orbit really easily because the drone is keeping the subject centered at all times and doing the hard work for you. Point of interest or POI mode makes the drone do a circling motion around your track subject. This continues to do that circling motion even if you start moving. So as your subject walks around, for example, the Mavic 3 Classic will continue to circle him, getting you this epic kind of shot. Lastly, we have Active Track Mode. When you select this mode, you will see a position icon appear, which again might be new to you if you are upgrading from something like a Mini 2 or Mini 3 Pro. And if you select this, you can choose from what angle you want the drone to track the subject. For example, from behind, to the side, or even in front. While tracking, you can change this angle at any time by clicking the icon again and choosing a new direction and the drone will move around to that position and continue tracking. The Mavic 3 Classic also comes with all the quick shots we are familiar with. But if you don't know what quick shots is, this is where the drone does moves for you to create epic short videos. All you have to do is select your point of interest and then you can choose from the drone, rocket, circle, 
helix, boomerang and asteroid moves for the drone to perform. Also, just like the Air 2S and Mavic 3, the Classic comes with master shots, which takes quick shots another step further by recognizing the scene and automatically planning a flight route that incorporates multiple drone moves to quickly produce a short sequence that you can then share with friends, give to a client, post on social media, or for production work, such as taking a video of a property to add to a sales page. If you want to use the Mavic 3 Classic to take photos, you have four modes to choose from. Single shot is the default mode, and this takes a single image every time you press the photo button. AEB or automatic exposure bracketing is where the drone automatically takes three or five images in quick succession at different exposures, depending on which option you choose. And then you can merge these together in your photo editor to create an image with higher dynamic range. There is also a burst mode, which can take three, five, or seven burst images at a time. And a timed shot mode, which will take an image between two to 60 seconds after you press the photo button, depending on which option you select. If you love taking panoramas, great news, as the Mavic 3 Classic has four panorama modes. 180, great for landscapes. Wide angle, then we have vertical, and this is great if you're posting panoramas to social media, as these fit better in that nine by 16 crop. And lastly, we have sphere, which after going up in the air and taking all the images, creates a 360 image. This drone also comes with the hyperlapse mode, which are image time lapses, but with the drone moving. And the Mavic 3 Classic has four hyperlapse modes to choose from, free, circle, course lock and waypoint. And in each of these modes, you select settings such as the interval between photos, length of the final clip, speed and direction. Then you hit go and the drone will slowly fly while taking photos for five, 10 or even 15 minutes, for example. And at the end, it automatically puts them together to create a hyperlapse video. This is great for capturing motion and works so well for things like sunsets and sunrises. The Mavic 3 Classic, comes with two return to home modes that allow the drone to automatically return back to where it took off from if you engage it by pressing and holding the return to home button on the controller, or if it engages automatically by the drone losing signal, for example. The first option called preset will rise the drone up to the altitude set in the safety settings before it flies back to the home point and lands. The second and much more sophisticated mode is called advanced return to home and you can enable this by selecting optimal in the return to home settings. When this is turned on, the drone automatically determines the optimal route back to its home point and flies back quickly while avoiding obstacles using its obstacle avoiding sensors. One of the features which makes this drone incredibly safe to fly is the APAS 5.0 or Advanced Pilots Assistance Systems 5.0. And this enables the drone to detect avoid and even bypass obstacles in all directions using the eight sensors dotted around the drone giving it a 360 degree view. When bypass mode is enabled in the settings it can detect and maneuver around obstacles and narrow or tight spaces efficiently. Break mode on the other hand will stop the drone whenever the sensors detect an obstacle and prevent it from flying into the obstruction. This makes it much less likely that you will crash the drone due to a lapse in judgment or concentration with this enabled and can be super useful when using active track to prevent the drone flying into an obstacle as it tracks you. If you do have the misfortune of crashing or losing your drone, then as with most other DJI drones, you can go into Find My Drone, which will show you the location or last recorded position of your Mavic 3 Classic. You can also turn on flashing and beeping, and the drone will start making a loud beeping sound, which should help you find and locate it. AirSense is another fantastic feature that is included in this drone. It detects nearby manned aircraft such as airplanes and helicopters and notifies you on the screen. This means that you can be aware of them aircraft in the area and land the drone and wait until they pass. When it comes to the controllers, the Mavic 3 Classic is compatible with the RCN1 and the newer DJI RC. If you already fly a DJI drone, chances are you are familiar with or even own one of these two controllers. But if you are new to drones, I will quickly explain the differences. The biggest and most noticeable difference is the fact that the RCM1 requires a phone to be attached. You simply pull up the cage on the top, 
Insert your phone and plug in the cable attached to the controller. Then after downloading and opening the DJI Fly app, you are ready to go. The DJI RC on the other hand comes with a built-in 5.5 inch screen and the Fly app natively installed meaning you don't need to use a phone. The RC N1 without the phone attached is slightly smaller than the DJI RC, so this may be a consideration if you need to pack it into a smaller space. Other differences include separate buttons on the DJI RC for photos and videos compared to the combined button on the RC N1. There's also two scroll wheels, one for zoom and the gimbal compared to the single scroll wheel on the RC N1. And an additional function button, two in total, on the back compared to the single function button on the front of the RC N1. You can also insert a memory card into the DJI RC and do screen recordings, which you can't do on the RC N1. Now, that being said, these are both fantastic controllers, both well-made, ergonomic, and comfortable to use. I have used both extensively and have enjoyed using both. My personal preference, and the one I always seem to take with me these days, is the DJI RC. Having a built-in screen is super convenient, and it makes the setup process marginally quicker. I just have to pull the controller out, turn it on, and away we go. Also, this screen is fantastic. I find it more than bright enough, clear, and an absolute joy to use. If you want to get videos or images off your drone and onto your phone quickly, then you can use the high-speed quick transfer function. To use this, you open the DJI Fly app on your phone, and with your drone on, you will see a prompt in the bottom left corner to enable quick transfer mode. After a few seconds, once the connection has happened, you will be able to see all the files you can transfer, preview them, and then download them using this icon here. This should give you speeds of up to 70 megabits per second, which means you can transfer your videos and images super fast. For example, a one gigabyte 4K video could be transferred in around 30 seconds. Although at the time of testing, I didn't have any ND filters to try, the clear camera filter cap that comes with the drone is removable by twisting it just like the Mavic 3 or even Mini 3 Pro. Therefore, it's easy to assume that ND filters will be available for this drone pretty quickly after release. And as these will fit just like the Mavic 3 or Mini 3 Pro, it means they will be easy to attach and really secure once fed it. If you're trying to decide if you should upgrade from your Mavic 2 Pro or in the market for a top end drone and are considering the Mavic 3 against the Mavic 3 Classic, then here is a super simple comparison table that should help you see the biggest differences between them drones and feel free to pause the video or take a screenshot to use this as reference. The Mavic 3 Classic comes in three versions. Firstly, you can get the drone by itself and this will be great if you already own another DJI drone and have a DJI RCN1 or DJI RC controller and you can use that with the Mavic 3 Classic and save money by getting the drone only. Then you can get a package with the Mavic 3 Classic and RCN1, or thirdly, a version with the Mavic 3 Classic and the DJI RC, that's the controller with the screen. Now all of them versions come with only one battery, so if you're planning on doing a lot of flying, you may want to consider the Fly More combo. This includes two additional batteries, a three-way multi-battery charger, a car charger, spare propellers, and a convertible shoulder bag, which can also be turned into a backpack. So who do I think this drone is for? Well, firstly, I think this drone is a worthy upgrade if you own a Mavic 2 Pro and have been on the fence about the Mavic 3 due to its price point. The DJI Mavic 3 Classic brings all the benefits of the Mavic 3 with the exception of the telecamera, including the benefits of an increased flight time, better wind resistance, the new cruise control feature, larger camera sensor and 5.1K video, and all this comes in at a lower price point. This drone might also be for you if you're currently looking for the best flagship drone you can buy and aren't really interested in using the telecamera that comes with the Mavic 3. The Mavic 3 Classic will be the better option as you can save money and still have 99% of the features of the Mavic 3. I also really like how DJI has started to build up this ecosystem with the compatibility of their DJI RC controller and the availability of drone packages with the drone only. Meaning once you buy one drone, you can upgrade or buy a larger drone for more professional quality video and photos, 
or a smaller drone for travel and portability and to be able to use the DJI RC you already have. Now, if you've just purchased the DJI Mavic 3 Classic and you want to protect your investment, then I highly recommend DJI Carry Fresh. It's DJI's version of insurance and it covers you for accidental damage that includes collisions, flyaways and water damage. Now, I have never had to use Carry Fresh for my Mavic 3, but I did have to use it recently for the DJI Avatar. I crashed the drone and had to use Carry Fresh and I returned the drone on a Tuesday and had a brand new one in my hands by the Friday. It was really that quick and I was super impressed with the service. Now the Mavic 3 Classic has fantastic safety features such as omnidirectional obstacle avoidance and APAS 5.0 which allows it to automatically bypass obstacles it comes across but a simple lapse in judgment or concentration can mean that you crash this drone or damage it and when you're buying a drone at this price point you want to know that it's protected. I will put a link in the description down below where you can read all about DJI Carry Fresh. And speaking of DJI, they have very kindly provided me with two redeemable codes for one year of DJI Carry Fresh for free to give away. Now, to be in with a chance of winning one of them two codes, all you have to do is drop a comment down below and you can comment whatever you want and you must be planning to or have purchased the DJI Mavic 3 Classic. I will be picking the two winners on Wednesday the 16th of November, so make sure to drop your comment down below before that date if you want to enter the competition. I recommend you just do it now. If it's after Wednesday the 16th of November, I'm sorry the competition is over, but I do still recommend that you take a look at DJI Carry Fresh and potentially purchase it as it's great protection for your DJI Mavic 3 Classic. Now this is super important, so please listen carefully. YouTube, as you may have noticed, is full of scam commenters right now. And these people will impersonate YouTubers by taking their profile photo and even trying to replicate their name and reply to comments on videos saying you've won a prize to try and lure you into giving them money. I try to ban these scammers as quickly as possible, but sometimes there's so many a few slip through the net. So please be super diligent and when it comes time for me to announce the winners, I will reply to your comment. I will also post the name of the winners on my community page so you can check and verify it there. And then I will simply provide you the redeemable code for free. Good luck everybody. So hopefully now you know everything there is to know about the DJI Mavic 3 Classic. After flying this drone for a few weeks, I have loved the quality of the videos and images you can get with that incredible camera and the performance of this drone in the wind. It has been super windy in Northern Ireland over the past few weeks while testing this drone and it has handled it like a champ. There are links in the video description which you can use to pick up this drone at no additional cost to you, but it does help support this channel, which I really appreciate. If you have any questions about this drone that I haven't covered in the video, then please leave it in a comment down below and I'll try to make a future video on that. Now, before you go, if you've liked this video and you've learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get better photos and more cinematic videos with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. If you want to stick around and watch a few more of them now, here's a few I personally recommend. And I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.